In this video, you're going to learn exactly how to fail the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate. Now, before you look at me and say, wow, has he lost his mind? Not yet, because here's the thing. Most people don't plan to fail. They actually fail to plan. And when you fail to plan, you're actually casting a vote for planning to fail. In this video, I'm gonna go over several things that if you do one or more of these, you can really increase your likelihood to fail the AWS Solution Architect Associate Exam, which I know you don't wanna do. But if you don't know what these things are, you may inadvertently do them and then reduce your chances for being successful on the exam. Now, if you're new here, Go ahead and subscribe right now because each week I'm creating a video to help you navigate your AWS cloud and tech journey. Now, we'll start out with the first thing, which is not understanding how the Solution Architect Associate Exam stacks up with what I call the AWS certification hierarchy. AWS has four different types of certifications. There's the foundational level, there is the associate level, there is the professional level, and then there's specialty. Now, foundation is, just like the name uh, suggests, a foundational level certification, which are knowledge-based certifications. This is where something like the AWS Cloud Practitioner would fall uh, under. Now, once we move up to associate level certifications, obviously the Solution Architect Associate falls under there. And this would be uh, types of certifications that are called role-based. So this would be like uh, developer or sysops administrator or solution architect, where you're gonna put on those hats and you're gonna look at AWS and the cloud and the problems and challenges that you need to solve through that lens. So solution architect, you need to look through that solution architect lens, such as things like uh, architecting secure, cost optimized, operationally excellent, reliable, and performant applications. Now, when we take a look at professional, it's kind of analogous to associate. However, we're at the professional level now. So one distinct difference is the architectures that you're going to be taking a look at will be more advanced and more complex versus that associate. Now, specialty is kind of on par with the complexity and difficulty level of a professional. However, now we're limiting the scope of what it is you need to know into uh, a certain area of depth. That's why they call it specialty. So this would be focusing on nothing but networking or focusing on machine learning as an example and being able to go deep into this area. So Solution Architect Associate, as I mentioned, falls into that role-based certification that is not as complex as a professional and not as simplified as foundational. So that's something you need to know. Now, the next thing that people don't do that increases their likelihood of failing Solution Architect Associate is they fail to review the AWS Certified Exam Guide. Now, every AWS certification has an exam guide and I highly recommend you read the exam guide from start to finish, not to worry because I'm gonna to link to that down below under uh, the links section of the description. Now, when you don't read the exam guide, you do not know who the target candidate is, you're not familiar with how many questions are gonna be on the exam, and one thing you're not familiar with is how you're going to be scored on this thing in terms of what's gonna be covered. So. Something that you're going to want to be very familiar with are the domains and tasks on the exam. The AWS exam guide covers that from start to finish. It even talks about that there are some questions on the AWS Solution Architect Associate exam that are not scored. And that's why you need to take a look at that to figure out what that means. In addition, under those domains, you learn the weightings of how those questions and those topics will be represented on the AWS Solution Architect Associate Exam. So you'll know uh, a particular domain and then you'll know, okay, is it gonna be representative of 24% of the exam or is it 10% of the exam? 
and this is definitely going to help you study big time. Next up on the list is not properly training for the Solution Architect Associate exam. One area that I want to point your attention to is AWS Skill Builder. AWS Skill Builder is a learning platform that you can learn all types of topics under AWS. And case in point, you can go here to find great training on AWS. You get a mix, uh, mix of free training as well as training that requires a subscription. And you can find some great training there on Solution Architect Associate. Much of the Solution Architect Associate exam will be based on theory and AWS Skill Builder can help you with that theory greatly. But that's not all AWS Skill Builder can do. It can also help you learn hands-on AWS skills, specifically AWS Builder Labs, which are fantastic that you can also do, as well as something else I wanted to point out to you called AWS Cloud Quest. AWS Cloud Quest for Solution Architect role is a three-dimensional gamified learning platform that allows you to navigate a virtual city. You interact with the virtual citizens of this virtual city, and then with your virtual avatar, you get to interact with those virtual citizens, and they tell you different challenges they're having within the city. And what you have to do is learn their business challenges that they're trying to uh, resolve, and then you do scenario-based labs which has you going into the AWS Management Console and working hands-on with AWS services to solve the virtual citizens' business challenges. The Solution Architect Associate exam covers a lot of information. Sure, you can learn the theory, but when you get down to those details and you're looking at the questions, sometimes it's very hard for you to distinguish between which answer is the right answer. That's where doing those hands-on labs can give you that extra edge to be able to figure out what the right answer is. And remember, beyond just passing the certification exam, after you're done with that, you want to be able to take this and employ these skills on your job or to get a brand new job. Here's another thing that people do that increases their likelihood to fail this exam. And that's they skip over the AWS Well Architected Framework. When you review that AWS exam guide for Solution Architect Associate, you're going to quickly realize that it's really closely based to the AWS Well Architected Framework. Now, if you don't know what the AWS World Architecture Framework is, you need to learn what that is very quick because Solution Architect Associate is going to test you on that level of knowledge. It's going to cover things like building secure, cost optimized, operationally excellent, reliable, and performant architectures on AWS. So if you have a good understanding of that, you're going to have a much better experience on your Solution Architect Associate exam. But if you skip over it, well, the time you're gonna have might not be that great. All right, just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, the next mistakes people make, failing to do practice questions. Let's say you went ahead and you learned all the theory. You did those hands-on labs, but on the test, you were under pressure to be able to recall that information within a limited amount of time. The practice test will tell you where you're strong at, where you're weak at, and there'll be time just like the real exam will be so you can put yourself under pressure. Make sure that you get some practice exams so that you can practice recalling all the information that you spent so much time storing in the brain. I would say practice exams in combination with your theory and hands-on labs is going to be vitally important to help make sure that you are prepared before you go in there and sit that exam. Next thing people do that increases their likelihood of failure, you cram the night before the exam to the point where you might even pull an all-nighter or you get a very poor amount of sleep. Remember, it's okay to study, but if you cram the night before, you still have to go in there on the day of the exam and, uh, and have the energy to be able to get through all those questions read all the scenarios, and then to be able to select which answers are right. That takes energy. And if, if you've crammed the night before, you're reducing the strength that you need to go in there and get a successful result. And perhaps the most diabolical and saddest thing that you can do, even if you have prepared so well for this thing, you could still just 
lose it the day of the exam, you go in there and you have poor time management. So you don't have a strategy for when you get stuck on a question. You lose track of your time and you end up having like five minutes to go and you got 30 questions left. You do not want to be in that situation. And this goes back to when you do those practice questions, you can also focus on the time management. Now that you have a good understanding of what not to do, take a look at this video here so you can start learning how to actually prepare for the Solution Architect Associate. Go ahead and leave your comments below. I love answering your questions and I'll see you in the next video.